Hello everybody and welcome to my video 2 of my coverage of Kono Light Novel Gasugoi. In this video I'm going to be covering the top 10 Tonkobon list, which Tonkobon are slightly larger than the Bunkobon. Uh, they're considered a little bit more of a collector's edition. If uh, we take a look at sort of an equivalent, uh, the Seven Seas releases, uh, well, particularly Reincarnated as a Sword, are the B6 size that most Tonkobon are in Japan, so it gives you kind of an idea of what we have in English that's of a similar size. Now, if you are just checking out this video, you didn't see my previous one on the Bunkobon list, I went into a little bit more depth about what Kono Light Novel Gasugoi is, why it's important even to us here in English, so I suggest you watch that one first. I'll leave a link up here above my head somewhere that if you want to check that one out, Please do so first, and then uh, come on back to this one and we'll talk some more about Tonkobon. If you're still here or, you know, you just decided to watch this one first. Anyway, this list, as I said, Tonkobon list, slightly more expensive books. They split these four years ago for whatever reason. What's interesting about this list is that the Bunkobon list is very heavily populated with slice of life real world type series, whereas the Tonkobon list is far more like fantasy isekai type series, not exclusively, but way more than what we see on the Bunkobon list. Also notable on this list, only four titles returned from last year. There's a brand new number one title, and for the ones that we have in English, five of the titles on this list have been licensed for English release. So we have about half of them, which uh, honestly isn't too bad given how many of them are new to the list this year. So with all that said, let's just get on into it. And again, pardon my horrible Japanese pronunciations. First up at number 10, and this one was sixth on last year's list, that is Majo no Tabi Tabi, or as we have it in English, Wandering Witch, The Journey of Elena. It is written by Jogi Shiraishi, illustrated by Azure. What's your favorite story? Does it have a hero who slays a dragon and saves a princess? Or a child of prophecy destined for greatness? Well, my favorite story is a little different. It's the tale of a witch who travels the world, seeking nothing in particular. With no quest of her own, she's free to wander wherever the wind takes her, adding a few pages to the story of whomever she meets before setting off on her next adventure. At the end of her travels, the witch takes on an apprentice who will one day begin her own journey. And so the cycle continues, or so the story goes. Now, the witch who starts the story anew, who could she be? Now, this one's actually currently having an anime air, and I believe the 14th volume is going to be released shortly in Japan. So, very much ongoing series. The third volume has just been released in English. It's been released by Yen On. Uh, I did review the first volume. I actually really kind of liked it. Um, not going to be for everybody, uh, which I think the anime is very much evidence of, but uh, but it's it's still, I thought it was pretty cool. It's definitely a series that I could see myself reading more of. At number nine, and this one is new to the list, and that is Madogushi Dahlia wa Utsumukaniya, or Dahlia Wilts No More. This one is written by Amagishi Hisaya, and is illustrated by K. I'm sorry, Dahlia. I want to break off our engagement. That was what Dahlia's fiancé said in front of her. In Dahlia's former life, she endured hard work, and she died from a heart attack as she hung her head down. In this new world, when she wanted to be a good wife and quietly hang her head down, her engagement was cancelled. Dahlia swore to stop hanging her head down. Work hard, go where you want to go, eat what you want to eat, drink what you want to drink, live as I want to live as much as possible. Living this way, Dahlia met a knight from the demon subjugation unit, Dahlia who liked magical tools, and Wolf who liked magical swords. Every day they were involved in drinking and eating while passionately making magical devices and magic swords. If it was for a convenient life, the magical devices craftswoman who wouldn't hesitate no matter the difficulty, and the fearless knight of the demon subjugation unit who single-mindedly cut his way forward. The two people who wanted to turn their back from love 
Will they one day fall in love? So a bit of a romance, isekai, fantasy tale. Like I said, uh, two fantasies right in a row. Keep up, there's more. <laughs> At number eight, and this one's new to the list, Afumi no Umi. It's written by Israfil, illustrated by Fu Midori. The year 1500, a historic year, when the Ashikaga shoguns were ousted by the Miyoshi family, and the Muromachi shogunate began to collapse. In the small fife Kuchiki in Omi, there was a boy who became the head of the family when he was only two years old. His name was Kuchiki Mototsuna. In fact, he was a reincarnation of a modern Japanese person who loved history. As he ponders the fate of his forces, he is faced with numerous challenges, including financial difficulties, a shortage of human resources, and a cunning scheme by another fife. However, Mototsuna, who knows history, does not give in. With his overwhelming knowledge, negotiation skills, and boldness, he runs through the turbulent times. A rare strategist buried in history rewrites Japanese history. A bold depiction of the life of Kuchiki Mototsuna, the only warlord who saved the three greats, Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and Iyasu, was born. So, a retelling of Japanese history, Isekai series. These ones are actually a little bit more popular, I think, than we in the English market know. Um, I mean, obviously, if you're an anime fan, you see this more often in anime, but we really haven't had a, much in the way of light novels brought over. I think this is more of a, again, I, I'm not familiar with every light novel released in Japan, but it does seem like we see this crop up more in manga, or maybe it's just that those are licenses that have come out, so we're more aware of them. But uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I don't know enough about Japanese history to know the significance of this person that he has been reborn as so I, I don't know just how much there's going to be play in terms of rewriting history or retelling history or altering history um but it sounds kind of cool actually at number seven and again this is another one that's new to the list this year and you know honestly i'm just going to read the english title because Wow. Uh, let this grieving soul retire. Woe is the weakling who leads the strongest party. Uh, this one's actually been licensed for English release by Soul Press. They're going to be releasing it digitally in December with a print edition to follow. It's written by Tsuki Kage with illustrations by Chaiko. The golden age has dawned for treasure hunters who raid treasure vaults all over the world in search of glory, despite the dangers. Immeasurable wealth, fame, and power await those who prevail. Let's be treasure hunters. This promise between Cray Andre and his friends came to a sad conclusion. One young Cray realized he didn't have a treasure hunting bone in his body. Yet for some reason, people's expectations of Cray continued to grow, as did the danger to his life. While his friends became greater, greedier beasts, Cry mastered the art of begging and pleading. Witness the weak and woe of a man who just wants to retire. So like I said, this one has been licensed by Soul Press. Sounds like it's a pure fantasy title. So again, not an isekai, but uh, yeah. There's more isekai to come, don't worry. At number six, and again, this is new to the list this year. And that is Tier Moon Taikoko Monogatari or as we have it in English, Tier Moon Empire. This one being released in English by J Novel Club. It's written by Nozomu Mochitsuki and is illustrated by Gilse. Surrounded by the hate-filled gazes of her people, the selfish princess of the fallen Tier Moon Empire, Mia, takes one last look at the bleeding sun before the guillotine blade falls, only to wake back up as a 12-year-old. With time rewound and a second chance at life dropped into her lap, she sets out to right the countless wrongs that plagued the ailing empire. Corrupt governance? Check. Border troubles? Check. Natural calamities and economic strife? Check. My, seems like a lot of work. Hard work and Mia don't mix. So she seeks out the aid of others, 
starting with her loyal maid Anne and the brilliant minister Ludwig. Together they strive day and night to restore the empire. Little by little, their tireless efforts begin to change the course of history, pushing the whole of the continent toward a new future. And why did the selfish princess have a change of heart, you ask? Simple. She didn't. She's just terrified of the guillotine. They hurt like hell, and Mia hates pain more than work. Uh, I have read the first volume of this one, and it is phenomenal. And uh, pretty much anybody that I have seen who has reviewed this has agreed. Uh, it is a very, very well done book with a fantastic main character. Uh, the narrator can be a bit of a hard jerk on Mia, but, uh, but overall she is a very likable character and she's surrounded by other likable characters. Uh, it, it, yeah, I, I could talk at length about this one because I really enjoyed it. Um, I'll leave a link for my review if you want to check that one out. Uh, but yeah, it, if you're looking for a really good, um, sort of undo my horrible future type light novel, this is definitely one to take a look at. And what's kind of cool about it is even though it sort of has this fantastical element of time rewinding, there's no magic in this world. It, it is basically just like medieval Europe. It's, well, not even medieval Europe, like later than that. Um, like most people have said that it's it's very much sort of a play on the whole Marie Antoinette type thing with Mia filling that role, uh, at least, you know, until she gets her head chopped off. And hopefully she won't fill that role again because uh, she's a cool character and I don't want to see that happen to her. At number five, we have Babel, written by Kuji Furumiya and illustrated by Haruyuki Morisawa, a college student Shizuku Mizuse has suddenly wandered into a different world from modern Japan. She is at her wit's end after landing at the frontier of a world where swords and magic are the norm. But she happens to meet an eccentric young mage, Eric, who is studying magic letters. Please, help me, please. Uh, okay, but I'd like to ask you one favor in return. Tell me the letters of your country. In order to find a way to return to Japan, the two set out on a journey to the magical kingdom of Pharsus. The journey is full of absurd and mysterious mysteries, and so fate begins to turn. This is a story about words. It is a story of hope and change in the world that has just begun to emerge from their journey. So this, interestingly enough, is by the author of Unnamed Memory, and funny enough, is set in the same world as Unnamed Memory, which is a pure fantasy title. So it's like an isekai set in the same world that you wrote a fantasy romance story in, which is kind of cool. This was actually released a number of years ago, but because of the popularity of Unnamed Memory, was given a brand new Tonkobone list, uh, Tonkobone release. So it's hit the list now, even though it came out years and years ago. So yeah, I mean, from what I can see, there's only two volumes on this one. Um, I guess depending maybe on how Unnamed Memory does in English, maybe we'll see this one get released. At number four, and this one actually was on the list last year, it was number five, and that is Rebuild World. It's written by Nafuse and illustrated by Gin. The civilization of the past, now called the Old World, has produced many relics with its advanced technology. Many rubble of unknown material, high-rise buildings floating in the air, strange medications, and a group of weapons that are too powerful to be used by people. After the collapse of science and civilization, people gathered these relics, and over time they were rebuilding human society. In this way, the hunters were created, the warriors who faced the various dangers of the old world. Akira, a new hunter boy who wants to go up from the slums, enters the ruins of the old world where he meets a mysterious girl who only he can see as a ghost. In a world where hunters are trying to overcome the legacy of an old civilization. So this one sounds cool. <laughs> and again, it's not really fantasy. It's kind of more like apocalyptic future type thing. Um, but I don't know. I'm again, I am a sucker for these kind of stories. These sort of like, why did the world collapse and fighting to find old technology and everything else? Like, 
Like it's totally like a JRPG setup. I, I, and uh, yeah, it's, I kind of hope we'll see this one get licensed in English at some point. I mean, it's the second year it's been in Kona Light Novel Sagasugoi, and last year was fifth, so it wasn't like, you know, just scraping by, and now it's moved up a spot too, so. Uh, eh. At number three, we have actually, this is the title that was number one last year, and just released in English this month, and that is Unnamed Memory, written by Kuji Furumiya and illustrated by Chibi. Love can bloom in the strangest places and people. A cursed king and the world's strongest witch are about to cross paths, forever changing their future and the fate of the world. So like I said, this just came out in English. It's licensed by Yen On. So uh, I haven't even had a chance to read it yet, but I've been pretty excited to check it out. There's been a lot of really positive word of mouth about this one. Uh, a lot of people saying that it's quite well written. Uh, so definitely one that I, I want to check out soon. At number two, and this one was actually funny enough, number two on the list last year, and that is Honzuki no Gekko Kujo, or as we have it in English, Ascendance of a Bookworm. This one is actually released in English by J Novel Club, both uh, digitally and in print. It's written by Mia Kazuki and illustrated by Yoshina. A certain college girl who's loved books ever since she was a little girl dies in an accident and is reborn in another world she knows nothing about. She is now mine, the sickly five-year-old daughter of a poor soldier. To make things worse, the world she's been reborn in has a very low literacy rate and books mostly don't exist. She'd have to pay an enormous amount of money to buy just one. Mine resolves herself. If there aren't any books, she'll just have to make them. Her goal is to become a librarian. This story begins with her quest to make books so she can live surrounded by them. Dive into this biblio fantasy written for book lovers and bookworms. Uh, again, read just the first volume of this, which I... Man, I wish I had more time to read books. Um, this, you know what, this series just continues to get phenomenal reviews. It has had an anime adaptation which was very well received, which again I think speaks to the strength of the source material. Um, yeah, I, I mean there's really not much else to say about this one other than you should probably read it. Although, granted, it's probably not for everybody. Um, the pacing I, I think is a little bit slower than some light novels, but still incredibly well written, uh, very engaging and very interesting uh, series and, and one that I, I really need to at least finish the first arc, which I, if I recall is three books. So I gotta get back to it. I really do. And finally, at number one and brand new to the list, um, it is Ishura, which is written by Keiso and illustrated by Kureta. In a world after the defeat of the demon lord, all that are left are the Ashura, who have even slain the demon lord. A master fencer who can see the way to carve up his enemies with one glance. A lancer so fast he leaves sound behind. A raven black adventurer who handles a legendary in each of their three arms. A spellbinder that can materialize his words into reality. A cruel angel that bestows instant death. The Ashura of any and every conceivable race and species stand at the pinnacle of strength, seek an even stronger enemy, in order to receive the honor of being the true hero. All of them are the strongest, all of them a hero, but only one is worthy. The battle deter to determine the true one starts now. So, kind of sounds like Juni Tyson to me in a way, actually. Um, just an all-out ass-kicking type series. Um, I'd be kind of curious to see how this one works, uh, like whether it is like Juni Tyson, where it is just the bulk of each of the stories is just a battle between opponents, or whether there's more to it than that. Uh, I, I really have no idea because a near like a very much newer series. Uh, don't know a lot about it. Uh, had to use Translate to get sort of a description on it. Um, but still, uh, you know, if you're looking for a real action type light novel, it, like it's got to be pretty promising, especially you know coming in shooting in at number one on the list. 
So who knows, maybe we'll see this one get a license. So those are the top 10 Tonko Bone from this year's Kona Light Novel Gasagoi. Every single one of them a fantasy or isekai type story, except for Rebuild World, which we could argue is maybe a post-apocalyptic title, but it so certainly sounds like it has fantastical elements. I just find it so fascinating that these two lists can be so vastly different in the material that they cover, and I'm really not too sure why that is. Uh, I, I'm trying to think, I think it was Sam uh, from J Novel Club that said years ago uh, that perhaps the one reason was is that they were using the Tonko Bone uh, format for a lot of the web novels that they are licensing because of course the web novels, a lot of people already have read them. And even though they do some changes and edits and stuff like that, um, the fact that they're being released in a nicer edition kind of is in more of an incentive for people to buy because they will be a collector's item. Uh, I don't know if that still holds true anymore. That obviously was a couple of years back. I think that was when we were first talking about how they were splitting the lists and why they might be doing that. Uh, in any case, what do you think? What titles have you kind of hyped? Which ones do you want to check out? Uh, if we ever get them in English, which ones are you hoping for? Let me know in those comments down below. And again, if you haven't checked out my other video on Kono Light Novel Gasugoi, the Bunko Bone list, make sure you hit that link to do so. In the meantime, thank you for joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Till then, bye bye for now.